right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and start. Thank you so much for spending your Memorial Day weekend with us. I am going to stop sharing my screen so you can see me for a second. Welcome, everybody, to the Cash Flow Nurse weekly webinar. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of multifamily investing. So shout out to Trevor, who's joining me today from Massive Capital. Al, hi. Took, I see you. And I see some few new faces on here. Rose, T Tamara, Lisa, thank you so much for joining. Um, Perfect. So we're going to get right to it because we have a lot to cover. And the reason why I'm doing basics of multifamily is because I want to just go back to the basics and just talk about why we're, we are passionate about multifamily investing and why we believe in the wealth building power of it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And when I have my screen on, I don't think I can see your, the chat but I will have an opportunity, we will have an opportunity to talk about um, or to have questions answered. So we'll have a Q&A. So just a raise of hands, I would like to know um, who among here has been passively investing? I wanna see, all right, Al, I see you. All right, and of course, Trevor is both act, is a active and a passive investor as well. So. All right, just, um, we're going to get started here. Basics of multifamily investing. What is multifamily? All right, so for, for the passive investors out there, we know that we have, um, we invested in multifamily because of various reasons, and we're going to go over that. But a little bit about um, the cash flow owners, about myself. So I made it my mission to help 100,000 healthcare professionals invest in real estate. And it is because I believe I'm passionate about real estate and there are a lot of good reasons on, on how or why we create wealth through multifamily. But why, right? So I've been a nurse for, I don't know, 11 years, I'm dating myself. Um, I've been investing, me and my husband have been investing in real estate since 2019. We've done it all. We've done the long-term rentals. We've done the Burr method. If you're familiar with that, you know, buy, rehab, um, rent, refinance, repeat. Um, we've done midterm rentals. We've also fixed and flipped houses. So we are, you know, we've done it and we can speak to, to, all the strategies. We're also active and passive investors in 300 multifamily units. We are, myself and my husband are principals in Aida Equity, which is our multifamily investment company. And we partner with experienced operators like Massive Capital um, to bring you quality investment. I, I said here to the medical community, to the healthcare community, but actually, you know, we are, helping a lot of other people, individuals just like you, who are not in the healthcare field. But, you know, we just made it our mission to focus on nurses and medical personnel because of what we experienced in the past years. And I'm going to share that here as well. So the reason why I'm focusing on healthcare is because uh, during COVID, this is a picture of one of, our, one of our patients in our hospital. I just wanna share this story so that um, you can empathize with my mission and you will see how, how passionate I am with this mission. So this lady, uh, she, she's all over the news back then. Um, it's okay to share her information because she was on the news. So she was our patient. She, she was pregnant when she came to our hospital. She was pregnant with this little baby and she had COVID when she came to our hospital and she almost died. And we had to put her on this machine called ECMO. So ECMO is like your last hope, right? You don't wanna be on that because that means that if this fails, that's it, right? So she was sick for a long time. You know, she's been with us for, she was with us for several months, but because of the diligence of doctors and nurses at my hospital, we were able to save her and she was able to give birth to her baby without complications. So this is what we do. And this is why I love nursing so much. Um, I, I'm such a geek, I'm such a nerd. I can talk about nursing all day. 
Um, but, but then, you know, what happened was after that, nurses, healthcare professionals got burnt out and, you know, it's all over the news too, like how some hospitals in New York, they were wearing garbage bags for us PPE, you know, to protect them against COVID. And then a lot of the hospitals went on strike right after COVID. And this is, um, this was the line for me, you know, when, when I had, re when I realized that we had to fight for fair wages, for, um, you know, for people who, I mean, we have to fight for the safety of our patients, which is mind blowing because that should be the, that should be the, uh, um, the priority, right? But it's not happening. And then on top of that, we were fighting for our retirement. And so I thought, why do we have to go through this? Why do we have to fight our employers? Why don't we create our own retirement fund and make sure that we are taken care of? And so, and so this is my way of giving back to the nursing community because I know real estate, I know the power of real estate. And I recently, you know, pivoted, we recently pivoted to multifamily. And so I wanted to share this gift to the nursing and to the healthcare professional um, community. And so that is my story. All right, so then why real estate? Why invest in real estate? Why am I preaching about this day in, day out? because it is one of the safest investments in the world. Franklin Roosevelt said that, and Andrew Carnegie said that, 90% of all millionaires become so by owning real estate. And it is not such a secret now, but the, the, the rich, the wealthy own real estate. And because of laws, you know, tax breaks, and some laws that they use, they're able to multiply this wealth. And when I found out about that, my mind was blown. And I said, I have to share the secret to everybody who would listen, because this is how wealth is made. And we're going to go over that line by line. All right. All right. So the elephant in the room, stocks versus real estate. I'm just going to minimize my view here. OK, so stocks versus real estate. So this is a lot of, um, I hear this often, like they, a lot of people ask me, what about investing in real estate? I mean, I'm sorry, in stocks. What my, my retirement account is in my 401k is invested in stocks. You know, is that a bad investment? I come from a world or I come from the thought of di diversified investment is good. So I believe in having money in both stocks and real estate. However, just to show you, how um, real estate compares to stock and how real estate um, builds wealth quickly versus stocks. I just want to share this um, table with you guys. But first of all, I first encountered the thought that, hey, maybe 401k in the stock market is not where it is. When I first read Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, if you, if you guys are familiar with that book, um, are you guys familiar? Who's familiar with that book? It's Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. So he interviewed all the billionaires in the US, okay? Um, Ray Dalio was one of them, Warren Buffett was one of them. And what they said was actually the stock market is rigged against us, the average person. It is not made for the average person. So in fact, they, all this um, Wall Street companies, they make it so, so that they profit first. So they profit and then the, their clients do. Not to mention when you have your money on like, not to bash any, any companies out there, but like Charles Schwab or, or E-Trade, these guys take off the, their commission right off the top. Whether you make money or not in the stock, um, that they bought for you, they're going to make money. So they, they will get the commission. So um, that is one thing that I do not like about the stock market. And, you know, I, I do have money in the stock market with my 401k, but I make sure that I invest in index funds, which is what um, Warren Buffett is, uh, the, is suggesting for the average person. So 
and not only that, I don't understand, I don't understand stocks. So I try to invest where, um, where I, I, under, I invest in what I understand. Okay. All right. So, so with the stocks um, versus real estate, let's take a look at this. So if you buy, if you have $30,000, right, and you, you buy $30,000 worth of, uh, of stock units, you have $30,000 worth of stocks. But if you use that same 30,000 and put it down as a down payment for a real estate asset that costs 300,000, you have a $300,000 worth asset. And then if your $300,000 real estate increase by 10%, and let's say the stock market does the same, which is actually aggressive, um, then you earn 30,000 in the stock market, whereas in the, I'm sorry, in real estate, whereas in, in the stocks, you're only earning 3,000. Not to mention when you, you profit in the stock market, you don't really get any tax benefit, whereas in the real estate, you, you have depreciation to work with. So that is just a brief comparison um, with uh, stocks versus real estate. And I can talk more about that um, later on if you have any questions about it. All right, so what is real estate investing? Okay, so it is acquiring real estate asset to produce income. If it does not produce income, it's a liability. It's not investing, right? That is what um, Rich Dad Poor Dad says. If it doesn't bring, give you money, if it doesn't put money in your pocket, it's a liability. So. You, uh, you produce income in real estate, whether it's single family or multifamily through rents. So you buy a real estate asset, you rent it out, you get cash flow from the rents, provided that you bought correctly. And then also the equity when it appreciates, when, you're, when your real estate property appreciates, then you, you, and then you sell it, then you get profit from it. So, you can be an active or passive investor in, in real estate investing. So active means you're involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So a lot of people think that once you invest in real estate, that's it. So no, you're actually, in, well, it depends on what you're doing. Like say fix and flip is an active real estate investment because you are involved in the day-to-day -day transactions. You have to uh, manage your general contractors, your negotiating. Also with Airbnb, if you are self-managing, that is an active investment um, because you, you know, like if you do the cleaning or if you're the one who's taking the reservations and talking to your customers, um, that is active investing. Whereas passive, that means that you are an investor, you invest your money, um, and then you just sit back and wait for returns, which is a very attractive thing for me. I don't know about you, but that is what I want, right? Like I'll give my money and then I just sit back and relax and no matter where I am, whether I, I am in the Bahamas, I receive my income. So that is passive investing. Um, one example is, you know, just if you invest in a multifamily syndication, just like what we do, or if you are a lender, so that is passive investing. All right. so. But here's the good part. How does real estate create wealth? That is what we want to know, right? How does it make me wealthy? Well, there are a few ways and there are a, a few um, things that are, that are in multifamily investing or real estate as a general that enables us to create wealth. Number one is using other people's money. So for example, you, use, you have $50,000 to use as down payment to acquire a $150,000 home that will cash flow $200 a month. So you use 50,000 of your own money, but the rest you get from the bank, from other people's money. You cannot do that with, with the stock market. I mean, you can, but it's very risky. Um, how, however, with real estate, you only use a portion of, of, of what you have, and then you have a loan for the rest. And as long as you are cash flowing, you are actually 
making money out of other people's money, right? Another example is using $3 million as down payment to buy a multifamily that cash flows, or I'm sorry, that generates 500,000 in income. So that is very powerful. That is very powerful. That means that you don't use a lot of your resources or all of your resources, and instead you use a portion of it to create more income, and then, and then um, you know you're you're using a small portion, and then the other the rest of your savings. For example, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in savings, you used fifty to buy a hundred fifty thousand um, dollar real estate, and then you use another fifth the other fifty to buy another one hundred fifty thousand dollar real estate. Then you you are having income from both um, real estate assets. So that is the power of leverage. You always hear that in real estate. You're like, what is leverage, right? It's, it just means that using other people's resources. All right, the other means of creating wealth or how the wealthy people become rich with real estate is because of the tax benefits. It's called depreciation. So this does not exist in other businesses, but per IRS law, capital assets in a business depreciate over 27 years. So that means that um, when you have a business in real estate, the, the building itself is, is considered the capital asset. And in the eyes of the IRS, it depreciates, it loses value. But this is just in paper, right? It actually doesn't lose value because it appreciates. Um, but on paper, you can say that my capital asset, which is the real estate, the building, the house, it loses value and therefore it's a business loss and you can use it as a tax write-off. And this is an example. So um, a $500,000 asset or property, you used 100,000 um, as down payment. So you have a debt of 400,000 and then you have a cash on cash return, a 10% cash on cash. That is $10,000 per year that you earn from this property. Now you depreciate, um, uh, April rolls around, you submit your information to your CPA and then your CPA says, hey, you know the $10,000 that you earned from your property? It becomes, um, because of your tax depreciation of 18,000, you now show a loss of 8,000 in your taxes. So if you have other passive properties or pa passive investment, you can use this taxable loss of $8,000 against that. So your, your total um, taxable income becomes less because of this. And this is how you save taxes when you invest in real estate. All right, and this is one of the, well, also when I first learned about this, um, of course, I, when I was starting, I was reading a lot of books and I learned about this. It's called uh, a ghost loss. It is one of the things that, that, that attracted me to real estate, which does not exist anywhere else. So um, that is tax depreciation. Now, the third benefit of real estate investment is protection against inflation. So inflation is such a hot, hot topic right now. Um, I don't know what inflation is at 7% is it? And in general, we, we inflation is like two to 3% when, when we're not in a, in a landscape like what we are having right now. Um, so what does that mean? So when we have a property that you're renting out, so because of inflation, rent, rent tends to go up with inflation. So as price increases, gas prices increases, you can increase your rent, right, to go with inflation. But not only that, what about the, the, um, the value of your assets? So check out this graph, right? So let's say you have 100,000, um, let's say 100,000 instead of $100. You have $100,000 in 2000. And as you can see in this graph, as the years pass by because of inflation, the buying power becomes less and less. So imagine this, you had to be $100,000 part in your savings account. 
since 2000. And then you took it out now. Now it's only worth 50, what is it? 50, sorry, 59,000, okay? However, what if in the year 2000, you, you use that money, 100,000 to buy real estate? What do you think the worth of your 100,000 is now? It will go up because it went up with your real estate asset. Your, your real estate went, um, I'm sorry, your real estate went up in value, it appreciated. So your $100,000 went up with it. Did that, right? Does that make sense? All right. You guys feel free to, um, I, actually I can see the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to write it on there. All right, number four, loan pay down. All right, so what is loan pay down? So you have a mortgage, um, you bought your real estate, you invested in real estate, and then your tenants pay down your mortgage. You're not paying your mortgage, it's the tenants that pay it for you. Um, and so as the years go by, your, your, the balance on your mortgage go down. But again, if you bought right, if you invested right, then your equity should go up as your tenants pay down your mortgage. So that is one powerful tool that is used in real estate. Number five, appreciation. Have you guys heard um, the saying, do not wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait because historically housing prices go up. As you can see here on the left side, housing price index from the 1900s to 2020. Um, there is a little blip during, I think this was uh, the recession in 2008, but then it still went, uh, still continues to go up. Um, on the right side, this is just a comparison of commercial properties uh, such as apartments, retail, healthcare, real estate compared to residential. So as you can see, um, it follows the same trend. It follows the same pattern. It, it continually goes up. So again, that blip was during the recession, but then it just went straight up. And, and, and you know this also by, by experience, right? Um, Man, 2020, 2021, nobody can buy homes because they're being, um, because the homes are overpriced and, you know, there's such demand that created the price increase. And so historically, real estate will continue to appreciate. So what are types of real estate investments? All right, so not all real estate investments are made the same. Um, one of them is, so the first type is single family residence. So single family, we're just talking about a single family home, like the standalone, um, up to four units. So the duplex, triplex, quadplex are considered single family residence. And then more than four units, five units and above, um, these are considered commercial real estate. So these are the apartment complexes, self-storages are considered commercial, retail like that strip mall is con considered commercial, hotels, um, senior living facilities and healthcare real estate like, like medical offices are commercial real estate. And then the third type, I may be excluding some other types, but these are the most common ones. So the third type is raw land, which is literally just a piece of land. And then some investors, what they do, they buy that land, they entitle it, they fix it up so that it's ready for development. So why does that matter? It matters with the type of loan that you will be able to get when you buy this type of real estate investments. So for single family residents, these are personal loans, you personally guarantee it. So the bank will take a look at the, at the property and say, okay, well, I'm going to lend you this money according to the valuation that we have, according to the appraised value. Whereas in commercial real estate, you get a commercial loan and the bank actually looks at the income of the property and that is how they will determine how much money they will lend you. And that is an important distinction. And this is the reason why my husband and I went from single family real estate investment to commercial, because 
I, again, I will show you in the next slide um, how important and actually um, what how powerful this is, how powerful commercial loans are and the valuation, how that is different. All right, how are we guys doing? We doing okay? All right, so now, um, so single family versus multifamily, we're just gonna continue to talk about it um, just very briefly, you know, single family um, is not very efficient. When you have single family investments, you know, how many, for example, if you have five, single family homes that you have to manage. So that's five different buildings, there's five different roofs that you have to replace, that is five different HVACs that you have to maintain. Um, whereas in multifamily, if you have, let's say a five unit complex that is just one roof, one property manager and one transaction. So um, I don't know, but for me, I think just managing one location is manageable. I mean, I can barely manage three single families, let alone five or let alone 10, or what about 200? So um, for me, multifamily with just you know, one transaction, um, it's, it's very simple and it's easier to manage. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, when we compare or when we determine the value of the real estate investment, the, the property. So it's very, it's different how you determine this um, in single family versus multifamily. So let's talk about how we determine the value of a single family house. So if you remember when you bought your house, right? How do you know that you are getting a fair price? So for example, um, here in the Bay Area, houses here, I don't know, like a three bedroom, two bath, they go for 1.5 million, it's crazy out here. It's a wild, wild west. But how do we know that that 1.5 million is, is a fair market value? So what they do is when, when you guys appraise the, the property, they look at comparables. So they look at, they compare properties that are close to one another, similar age, similar make, and then they look at the sales price of maybe five or more properties, and then they get the average, and that is the, the value of your property, okay? So when you try to sell your house, and you want to sell your house for, let's say, um, another example, let's say you want to, you bought your house for 300,000 10 years ago, and now you want to sell it for 600,000. Um, now the, the appraisers will come in and say, um, actually, your house is worth 550 because the, your neighbors, um, these are the prices that they sold their houses for. So the point being is that you don't have any control. So the, the sales price will depend on your neighbors. And so that is what's, um, what's unique about single family. Whereas in multifamily, the valuation, so multifamily, five units and above, um, the valuation comes into play when the banks look at how much the net income is. So how much is your net operating income? And there is a computation, which I'm gonna show it to you later. Uh, value is equal to net operating income over cap rate. That is how they will determine the value of your multifamily. So it's very black and white. And why is this important? It is important because you can control it. You can increase your net operating income so the value of your property can increase or you can decrease your expenses, which will in turn increase the income. And then that will increase the value of your property. So let's take a look at this example. For example, you have a hundred unit apartment, you're renting it out for a thousand unit per month. Let's say you only have 90% occupancy. If we do the math there, your net operating income is 540,000 per year. Um, if the broker says it's a 5% cap rate, now cap rate might be a little, so just trust me on this, 5% cap rate, the value is 10.8 million, okay? Now, if you increase the rent by $25 per month, your 
net operating net operating income increased by twenty seven thousand dollars. So your net operating income from five hundred forty becomes five hundred sixty seven, and that brings your the value of your property to eleven point three million. Okay, I know math at this time it's almost like in this this time of the afternoon you know like it's a little hazy we're going to do that one more time okay we're going to do that um let's see where where is that so this is just going over the comp the comparables for single family and this is the uh the um formula that i talked about so the value is equal to the net income over the cap rate. Okay, I hope I, I didn't lose you guys, but let me go back to the math. Are you guys doing okay? All right, I wanna hear some, are you guys doing okay? We good? <laughs> okay, so I emphasize this because this is what, um, this is where the power lies. I think this is where the magic of multifamily lies is when you realize how the value of multifamily increases, okay? And we're gonna go do another math. You guys ready? And we're gonna do it slowly this time, okay? All right, you have 100 units. You saw an apartment complex, it has 100 units. All right, take out your iPhone now. Let's do some calculating. 1,000 units per, uh, I'm sorry, $1,000 per month per unit. How much is that? A hundred times a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars per month in rental income, but this is your gross income because we have not taken, I have not taken out um, expenses. Okay. All right, we're doing okay. Now, in order to get the, the annual income, we're gonna multiply it by 12 months because there's 12 months in a year. So that's $1.2 million in rental income per year. How are we doing? All right, we got, we got 1.2, but then we're not perfect. We're being conservative. So we're only gonna say that only 90% of our units are occupied, okay? So this is what we call conservative underwriting. You're not gonna assume that your property is always at 100% occupancy. 100% occupancy is great, but let's be realistic, so that doesn't happen. So we're gonna multiply 1.2 million per year times 90%. So in reality, our gross income is 1,080,000. Okay, we good? So now this gross income, we have to pay our mortgage, we have to pay insurance and we have to pay taxes. Let's just assume that 50% of that is our expenses. So 50% of 1,080,000, which is the gross income, we use to pay all our expenses. And this is not an ex exclusive list. We have property managers, we have um, accounting, et cetera. And 50%, by the way, is high. So again, we're being conservative. So we're gonna assume that we're spending 50% of our income. All right, so what do we do? We, we subtract 50% from the gross income to get our net. So what goes into our pocket? It's 540,000 and that is our annual net operating income. This is after, after everything. So this is what gets distributed to our investors um, depending on how the split is. Sometimes the general partners, the GPs who manage the asset, sometimes they don't even get um, a, you know, like distributions from this. But so this is what goes to our investors. All right, so that is how we get our annual net operating income. So now 
we're going to find out how much the value of this 100 unit apartment is that brings us 540,000 income. We'll see how much is it worth. So we divide it by a 5% cap rate. And this 5% cap rate, I just assumed it, um, it actually depends on the, the type of property, whether it's a new property, it's an older property, it depends on the location, it depends on the current economic climate. So let's just assume right now with this particular um, asset, we are using a 5% cap rate. So if you remember, value is equal to NOI divided by cap rate. And so the value is 10.8 million, just like what we saw in our earlier example. All right, so now why is this important? Why do I need to know this, Rochelle? It is because in the next slide, okay, we're gonna take the same multifamily but now we're gonna increase the rents by $25 per month. Now, $25 per month, is, it, is that high or is that okay? I think it's fair, right? I mean, I've, we've had rent increases up to like $200 a month. So $25 is not a lot. Now I'm gonna show you. And you will, if you're not ready to invest after this, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So same 100 units. We went in, we bought the property. We said, you know, we're going to increase the, the rents because they're actually below market rent. So we're going to increase it by $25 per month. So that's 25 times 100 units. We're getting $2,500 per month for the whole apartment complex. We multiply it by 12 to get the annual. That's $30,000 per year in additional rent. Again, we're not at 100% occupancy. We're only at 90%. So we multiply it by 90%. So that's 27,000 increase in income. $27,000 increase in income. But, but we did not add any expenses. We just increased the rent. We didn't do anything to the property. Um, so our expenses stay the same. So what happens? Our original net operating income, which is 540,000 plus 27,000 additional income gives us 567,000 in net operating income after the rent increase. Okay, watch this, pay attention. We divided by a 5% cap rate. Your new asset value is $11.3 million. You did not do anything to your multifamily. You just increased the rent by $25. And this $25 could be um, the renting the parking space maybe, or you know, like you, you start charging um, storage fees, for example. You just increase the value of your, your asset by how much is that without doing anything. So from 10.8 million, it's now 11.3. Let me go back. Oh, I, I, made, I made a typo here. So we increased the value just by increasing uh, the rent by $25 a month. All right, you guys following? And so this is why um, a lot of you know, wealthy people, they do this business, institutions, um, insurance companies, mutual funds, they buy multifamily because they understand this concept. And this is what is very attractive with multifamily. You cannot do this with, uh, with, um, with single family homes. So I don't care how many Airbnbs you have, but that unfortunately is not possible with single family. All right, so now you're sold. You're like, all right, I'm ready to invest, but how do I do that? So now there are ways, different ways on how you can invest in multifamily. One is called sole proprietor. If you have the bandwidth to buy a $10 million apartment, you are a sole proprietor. So if just you, you do everything that is a sole proprietor. 
The other one is a joint venture. So which basically means that you and your partner, you, let's say you and two of your friends, your three of your friends come together, you pull your money together to buy a $10 million apartment, but all of you have equal responsibilities. That means all of you share um, asset management responsibilities. Um, you guys check on your general contractor that equally. So you are in a joint venture agreement. Um, now the, the third one is syndication. Um, where there is a group of operators, or I'm sorry, there are a group of individuals who are the operators. They are the ones who look for the property, um, they manage it for you. And then there are a group of LPs called the passive investors who put in their money and they become part of the syndication as what we call silent partners or passive investors. So just going um, more in depth regarding multifamily syndication, like I said, it's a group of investors pulling their resources. Um, they use each other's money, time, or network to buy a multifamily property. All right, so parts of a syndication, I touched on this, general partners and limited partners. So the general partners are the ones, like I mentioned, they look for the deal. They put up the earnest money or any risk money involved. Um, they sign on the loan with a bank. They make sure that the deal is sound. They underwrite it. Hopefully they underwrite it conservatively. They implement the business plan. So for example, we buy a multifamily that is in distress or something that needs to be fixed up. So the business plan is to do value add. So they will go and fix the property up, maybe put some vinyl flooring, take out the carpet, maybe repaint the walls. So that is the business plan. And the GPs are the ones responsible to make sure that is implemented. They also manage the asset, make sure the, the property managers on site are doing their, their due diligence, their responsibilities, I should say. And they are also responsible for keeping you, the investors, updated with what's happening in the property. Sorry, let me go back here. So whereas the limited partners, you are the investors, you provide the funds, your responsibility is to, to vet the GP group. So if you're gonna invest in a, in, in a deal, so you wanna make sure that you're looking into um, the background of the GPs, their track records, how many deals have they done, uh, you know, like find out where, where are they investing, things like that. So that is your responsibility as a limited partner. All right, so now what is the structure of syndication? Okay, I hope I'm not being too dry here, but just I'm going to go through this really quickly. So basically this is, so you have the property, we buy the property, it's going to be in an LLC, both the general and the limited partners are going to be part of the LLC. So that this is the usual, this is a simplified version, but this is um, a usual uh, structure of a syndication. Thanks, Ulu. <laughs> All right. So now, types of limited partners are passive investors. Okay, so now you're saying, Rochelle, I wanna invest. I have the money. What deals do you have? You know, I would like to join in. Now, there are two types of limited partners that we usually invite to our deals. So we wanna make this clear. We, we um, Passive or limited partners are not created equally. So we have the accredited investors and the unaccredited or non-accredited investors. Um, so accredited investors are what we call, or these are the investors that have a net worth of $1 million excluding their residents. Or if you're single, you earn $200,000 a year. Or if you're married, you earn $300,000 a year for you and your spouse. And you have, um, and you expect that you're going to earn the same income for the next two years, or you've been earning it for the last two years. Now, unaccredited investors, they do not meet the criteria. However, these investors, they have prior relationship to the operators or the general partners who are running the deal. Now, why is this important? This 
is important. This distinction is important because it protects the investors. So accredited investors, we assume that you are aware of the risk of investing or investing in real estate in or just investing in, in general. Whereas it, with an accredited investor, we want to make sure that you know us personally before we take your money. So this is to protect you. So now, how do you know if you are an accredited investor or non-accredited, how do you know which deals you can invest in? So there are types of offerings. Um, there are two types. Actually, there are more than two, but we're only going to touch on two of the most common. Um, 506B, we take accredited and non-accredited investors. So if I come to you, for example, and I say, hey, um, let's say, Al, you're my friend. We, we, I've known you for 30, for 30 years, <laughs> for, for 10 years, all right? So I have a 506B offering. Um, now, Al is an accredited investor. He can invest in my deal. On the other hand, I have a friend that I've known for five years. She is not an accredited investor and she is interested in investing in my 506B offering, she can still invest because she knows me for a long time. So we have that prior relationship. Now for 506C are only for accredited investors. Um, and so this is the difficulty because sometimes the more attra the attractive investments are only for 506C investors. Um, and so this is only for, like I said, accredited investors who, who meet the criteria. Unfortunately, we do not take non-accredited um, investors for 506C offerings. Do you guys have any questions so far? All right, moving on. Okay. So now you are sold in investing. You want to, you have your funds ready. You found a deal that you like. You found a general partner that you vetted. You, you found a, you know, like a company, a general partner that has done multiple real estate deals, have exited multiple deals. And you're like, I'm ready to invest. But what happens in a, in a, in a deal cycle? So number one, the general partners will look for the deal. So they will look, for example, I'm gonna use Massive Capital because Trevor is here. So Massive Capital, they have, they look for deals all over the US, but they focus on key states, right? So they have a lot of properties in, in Texas. Um, they have properties in North Carolina, in Georgia. So these, because they, they have vetted the area, um, they've looked at the employment, the population, and they determine that this area is a is a is a good area to have a property in. So there is demand for multifamily. So they look for the deal. Now, the second part is they close the deal. So they they go to the bank, they they get the loan. Now the deal is closed. The next step is to stabilize the property. So especially if it's a value add property. Um, if there's a lot of work to be done, then there's a period where we need to make sure that the, the, the rents are stable, that we implement the business plan, and um, you know, expenses are either decreased or maintained in, in a certain level that is reasonable. And then after that, we start distributions. That is the that is payday for everybody. Now, depending on the market condition of the economy, we can either refinance, or if it does not make uh, if refinancing does not make sense and there is a good reason to, we will make the sale and we will exit the property. And this is when you get your equity back. So what happens is that um, during distribution you get a part of the cash flow, the, the rents, 
And then if we refinance or we sell the property, you will get a portion of the profit. Plus you get your capital back. So that is what's usually, what usually happens in a deal. So you will hear an, in a deal offering, you, okay, so um, equity multiple is 2.1x. That means at the end of the sale, you would have gotten a total return of two times your capital. So if you had put in 100,000 at the sale of the property, you will get another 100,000, which is the total distributions that you received, including the profit. All right, so now how do you get started is the big question. Get to decide whether you want to be active or a passive investor. So do you want to do the work? Do you want to source the deal? Do you want to talk to brokers? Um, do you want to do the underwriting? Do you have time for that? Or do you just want to be a passive investor? You have the funds, you want your money to work for you. You, you just want to you know, continue working. Like for me, if I, I would like to continue working as a nurse and then I just receive extra income, passive income on the side, you know, that's totally fine. But you get to decide whether you want it to do actively or passively. And the second step would be to get educated. You're going to read books, listen to podcasts, attend webinars such as this. And then you get to, you have to connect and network because you want to vet um, partners. If you're an active investor, then you want to find out who to partner with. If you would like to be a passive investor, you would want to vet your GP team. You would want to know um, what operators have been around, have, have been doing this for a while. And the next step is to build a team or you find a team and then invest. All right, so the next steps from here on out, now that you, you're convinced that multifamily investing is a good investment for you, that you've seen how it works, you've seen how it builds wealth, you've seen how, it, um, you, how, how you can use the tax benefits, what are the next steps? The next steps is to give you know, syndicators like me a call, Trevor, or anybody else who, who have deals and you schedule a call with them, find out what deals they have or what do they offer. And usually they will ask you to set up an account so that you can deposit your investment there. And then you transfer your, your investment to the portal and then you get to sit back and watch your money work for you. And so this is the opportunity, I think it's at the end of my presentation. But yes, it is. So do you guys have any questions? All right, I'm gonna open the, here you are. Let's see, I have a question right here. Thanks, Trevor. All right, so while this is loading, I'm gonna stop to share. I hope I provided great value to you guys and provided you great information but I'm sure you have some questions that you would like to answer or to, to ask me that I would be able to answer. Um, currently, we have some deals that we are raising capital for. Thank you. Um, we have 506B and 506Cs. I know this is very basic. It's, it's, it's a bird's eye view of what happens in a, in a syndication or the benefits of it. And we can, you know, as I go do, whenever I do the webinars every Sunday, I do one topic that kind of digs deep into one of the, one, one of the um, topics mentioned. So let's say, for example, one, one Sunday, we will talk about tax benefits. Um, another Sunday, we will talk about how to vet a GP team. And then another Sunday, maybe perhaps we can talk about underwriting. Kiara has a question. For someone who's new to all these and can only start with one at the moment, what's your take on investing on index funds versus investing on multifamily? So 
it depends on what your financial goals are. Um, so Kara, like for example, for me, I have money in 401, in both 401k because my employer matches the contribution. So I take advantage of that. But at the same time, um, I am very aware, you know, what goes on with 401k, how it takes a dip. And I would like to put my money in. So I want to put my money in real estate where I can control where I put my money and I can actually watch it grow. And I know the specifics to it. So um, again, it depends on your situation, but if it was me, I would save up for um, a real estate investment because I know that it will, as my money grows with real estate, it will snowball. And once I exit and get, and get my capital back, I can do it again. So that is what um, my personal, that's my personal take on it. Any, anybody else? Rachel says, thanks for sharing. I am interested on this, but I do not know you personally. And I also do not qualify for income. How do I start? Okay, great question, Rachel. So yes, so that is why we schedule, we have um, these scheduled calls. We would like to get in touch with you, kind of understand what your situation is. And we have to establish that relationship. And then we, you know, I get to talk to you about um, what we do as a company and as an operator. Um, so you have the time. Trevor, what is the, what's the timeline? Like we have to establish, I think it's 30 days. You know, it, it, you have to establish what they refer to as a substantive relationship, which is more than a quick phone call, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, talk for hours and hours and connections and connections. The concept of it is that, that you have to understand each other. Um, mm -hmm. And more importantly than getting to know each other is making sure that your goals and values are aligned. That's, that is way more important because you want to give your money to people that you know, like, and trust. And so you want to build, build that relationship. Um, that's most important. And how you start is exactly what you did. Show up tonight, start getting educated, start connecting with people. Um, that, that's how you do it. Right. So, and, and operators such as myself uh, and Massive Capital, we do calls all the time. And this is to be transparent to everybody on, on the properties or the deals that we have and how we do things. And then you get to know us, right? You, the important thing here is that you understand how we do business and that you're comfortable with how we do business and you're comfortable investing with us. Okay, Lisa has a question. Can you go over how the distribution is done? When do you start distribu distributing and roughly how much if you invest 10K? So, um, so distribution would depend on the asset or the property that you invested in. So for, in, for example, if you found a deal or somebody comes to you with a deal and they say, all right, so this multifamily is actually cash flowing on year one and we can start distributing by year two. Uh, on average, deals do not start distributing until the second year because they want the first year, they use the first year to stabilize the, the asset. <clears throat> you know, if there's evictions, if there are renters who are not paying rent, they use that first year to get rid of those bad tenants and replace and replace by Yifi. Um, and replace the bad tenants with good ones. So we basically give ourselves a year to do that. And distribution starts on the second year on average. Now there are deals that will start distributing on the first year. So it would depend on the deal. Um, so roughly how much if you invest 10K, again, it depends on the deal. When you are presented um, with what we call a PPM, um, a private, something memorandum, I completely forgot. Placement. But placement, private placement memorandum. It will actually show you how much you can expect to get. Again, these are not guarantees, of course. We don't use the word guarantee, but, um, but these are projections um, that, that we have based on our underwriting. So um, normally 
investments or deals, the minimum, um, the minimum investments, I've seen as low as 25,000, um, but an average 50K is the, is the most common minimum that I've seen out there. So some 506C deals, the minimum is 100 or actually 75, I've seen 75, uh, and some have 100K minimum. And the reason to this is because, you know, um, when operators, when these are huge, uh, you know, especially if they are huge properties that are like 10 million, you don't want to be diluted. So that means that you don't want your share to be a small part of it. I hope I answered your question, Lisa. You're welcome. So Trevor, what, what part of multifamily is your favorite? Like what about multifamily attracted you to it? I know we've talked about this in the last webinar, but I'm just curious. Yeah, so one of the things is everybody needs a place to live. And unfortunately, buying a house is out of the reach of many, many people. And so, you know, it, it, you just, it's just such a need for it. And then secondly, a lot of the multifamily that I've invested in and many people invested in are what's called value add. So they take an apartment complex that's not so nice and they make it nicer, they make it safer and they make it a better place to live. Yes, we do increase the rents, but we're making places that are better for people to live. And to me, that's kind of like, so you're solving a housing crisis, you're making places better for people to live, and then you're helping people that invest in it grow their financial independence. It's kind of like the, the, the grand slam, right? It's a hitting a triple because everybody gets something. That's why multifamily is so powerful, just because it, it covers so many things. Absolutely. Not only that, um, there are studies have actually shown that in this generation, you know, with the millennials um, starting to form families. Millennials are the group of people who are who are not sold in buying homes. So these are the 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 group of people who will need homes. However, they are they are not keen in buying them because they want to they want to be able to to be able to move, right? So they they want to be able to travel. Um, they want to be mobile. There's this nomad uh, ec economy, nomad economy that we have where they can work from anywhere. And this contributes to the demand of, of multifamily housing. So apartment housing. All right. And I see, hi, Al, you got your hand up. Yes. Um, thank you so much for putting this uh, webinar together. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I started multifamily at the beginning of this year and you know, I can share with you, like, you know, how was my journey and how I got started into getting into, you know, the opportunities in the multifamily space. And for me, the very first step that I did was educating myself. The next thing I did was find operators, you know, like yourself and massive capital and just sign up to their different events, sign up to their, their portal, investor portal and and, and get yourself into the mindset, like, well, how would I feel if I'm an investor or a potential equity partner in an opportunity with, with so-and-so, right? Mm -hmm. And once you, you get to know the operator, you know, you start building that relationship. So a great way to start building that relationship with operators and getting yourself into the industry would be just sign up to the portal, get their newsletters, see what opportunities they have. Even if you, you're not a credit investor, you might qualify as a sophisticated investor, you know, for, for a 506B offering, which you're allowed to have 35. Um, so there are opportunities and I would just suggest, you know, get yourself out there. Thank you, Al. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to ask um, before investing, how did you vet your GP team? But this is like, apart from going to the webinars, did you do anything else? You know, it, it kind of boiled down to, can I connect with the, with the operator? Um, are, 
backgrounds and values and future goals aligned, you know? And, you know, I met Trevor and we had a great conversation. He, he gave me his, his story and I thought it was tremendous. And I was like, I can relate to, to that. I met other members of the team um, as well. So just, just putting yourself out there, setting up that call, just that introduction, you know, and seeing if, if the values, if, if you trust um, the, the type of work that they're putting out, you know, attending the different workshops and webinars, that will tell you a lot about the type of operator, you know. So that's what I started doing is just going to the, to the portal, checking out opportunities, finding out about the, the operator and seeing if the values match. Fantastic. Absolutely. Because you want to, you will be working with, with the operators for at least five years. So you might as well like them, right? right. <laughs> Very good. Oh, I see Nancy, who's another nurse here, who's also into multifamily. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. You're so, welcome, Rochelle. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know you, you also are doing a presentation, right? Yes, June 8th, it'll be my first presentation. So awesome. Hopefully awesome. I'll see you there. Absolutely. Very good. So Nancy and her husband are nurses. They're traveling, they're travel nurses who've also discovered the magic of multifamily. I say magic because you, you know, like I, I can't believe like how how you grow wealth with multifamily, but but it happens and people have done it. And so you can also do it. Um, and we are here to help you through that journey. Um, We're still entertaining questions, but Trevor will have some webinars going on with deals. Trevor, would you like to share? I see that you've shared your link tree. Um, are you doing any webinars for any 506C deals? Yeah, we do have one coming up for X space. It's not multifamily, it's completely different. Um, I can talk about that one here because it is a 506C deal. Um, again, I don't, I, I show up to support you, not talk about my deals, but uh, thank you for the opportunity. XSpace is a very interesting, unique one. Um, and then we do have some 506B deals, but you would have to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with Rochelle or, or myself if we know each other, because um, we can't talk about those in a public format where we're not sure we have a relationship with everybody but uh you know but again i want to make sure i'm clear because it seems a lot of new folks here getting educated first connecting with people you know like and trust because you're going to be giving them your hard-earned money who yeah. worked hard for their money <laughs> i know yeah. i did and you want you want to give it to people that care about it and uh, want to do, do a good job with it so very important but Absolutely. yeah, we definitely do. So reach out to Rochelle or, you know, she can definitely point you in the right direction. Tarek too, sorry, I'm ignoring him. But uh, he's usually driving, it seems, when we're doing our, these, these <laughs> calls. But, uh, you know, and, and we're excited to work with them because they're good people. And, you know, good people eventually attract to each other. Um, and that's just how, that's how the world works organically, right? Absolutely, I believe that, 100%. All right, very good. So um, again, I'm here to, we're here doing this presentation not to sell you anything, but more so to give you information on why we think that multifamily investing, commercial real estate investing is the way to go. And I hope I was able to share with you the reasons why you should invest in real estate, not only because Trump did, and not because he's super wealthy doing real estate, but because it is doable. Um, you can track it, you can learn it, it's very easy to learn. And, you know, like there are a lot of us right here who is able to help and kind of guide you through your, through your journey if you decide to invest. All right. Well, you guys, um, it has been a great afternoon. I will see you again next um, next Sunday. Where am I? Yes, uh, I just have a, a, a deal. Um, I'm sorry, I have a, an event going on in Dallas, but I think I'll we will do another presentation on Sunday. 
And we will be talking about a different type of asset class on Sunday. So do not miss that. And as always, reach out to me. Here's my phone number if you need any, if you need any, if you have any questions or you need any information. That is the best way to give to get in touch with me. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn, as well as, um, oh, you can visit me on thecashflownurse.com. Send me a message on there. Are you uh, going to DealMaker? I am, yes. I wish I was going. You know, there's a meetup Thursday night with massive. Very good, I will be there. <laughs> All right. So, so anyone we'll in the start. Dallas area, um, it, you can find it on meetup.com or send us a note, we'll send you a connection, but yeah. I'm unfortunately not going to be there, but uh, we we will definitely have to make time. I'll be there. Awesome! I'll 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 see you there then, Al. Yes. All awesome. right, fantastic! You guys have a great afternoon. I hope you guys learned a lot on this webinar, and I will see you next Sunday. <laughs>